Greetings and welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 44. Today is September 12th, 2023. Wow, we just jumped into September and it's already midway into the month. Welcome, welcome. So you are about to hear a a clipping of, um, you are about to hear a clipping of a audio that was done for an individual who asked the question about being a discerning business owner. So here we go. So yeah, being a discerning business owner is important. You know, we talk about that paranoia, you know, in business. That paranoia is the very thing that keeps us going, but not extreme paranoia, not that type of paranoia that makes you look at everything, you know, every two seconds and no, not like that. The paranoia I am talking about is a discerning mentality. I feel something, something is not right, which then in turn forces us to go into the mode of saying, how am I going to check on this for myself? How am I going to stay in the game by realizing that this can happen or that can take place? And then just watching people, people watching, you know, Also, when you discern, you're going to be more effective because the passion is going to drive you, period. The passion is going to drive you point blank. I call myself a leadership professional, right? So that means I'm standing 10 toes down as straight as I can be as passionate as I can be for the purpose of making myself perform better, helping me to see through areas that I would otherwise not even recognize and just becoming better as a person. So what you've experienced, Kennedy, is a result of not being prepared for the forces that came to take you down, that came to make you feel intimidated because they look at themselves in the mirror and they say to themselves, that can't be me. It could have been me, but I chose not to allow that entrepreneur to be me. And so since it can't be me, I'm going to do everything in my power to create something that is going to force that person out of that position. Think about it. We see it all the time, Kennedy. We see it when we go into a competitive market looking for employment. We see it when we're given a project and another person wanted that project, but that person says, I'm going to sabotage that other person because I wanted that project since I didn't get it. No one's going to get it. And if she got it, I'm going to make her fail. Mm -hmm. It's a dog eat dog world in every entity that we can consider. It's a dog eat dog world. So we got to be ready for the dog. You know, we don't know if it's going to bite, if it's going to lick us, if it's going to sniff us. We don't know what it's going to do. So we just have to always be prepared. And that's why I tell you, Kennedy, focus on that area where you have that discernment tab already up. If six is your level, if three is your level, you don't have too much lower to go. When you're at three already, you're already so relaxed. By the time you hit one, anybody can do anything right in your face and you won't see it. So the discernment is there to help you recognize 
why people choose to walk away from you, why they choose to, you know, um, hide their faces from you. There are reasons for that. So when your client base, when, you know, individuals within your business walk away from you, realize there's a reason and it's a great reason because if you've done all that you can do, Kennedy, in your position, you know, and they still reject your brand, you know, being an eyebrow specialist, Kennedy, is extremely difficult in today's world because when you wax that eye uh, shape onto the face, that is the very thing that people are going to recognize every time they look your client in the face. So you may do the best job ever, but because that individual does not feel good about that set of eyebrows that they have to keep on forever or until it wears down or that haircut that's gotten or the, you know, wax hair removal facial that we get, you know, these people are going to seriously say that we are not professional in our craft because they want a reason to fail. They want a reason to not be able to pursue what it is that they do, or they go and in silence, they're deeply in their heart competing against you for the passion that you've shown them instead of, you know, giving the accolade where it's due. So, you know, maybe in their hearts, they want to become that lash specialist. So they're going to go back to school and they're going to get that lash certificate so they can show you up, but it's okay. Stay in your lane, continue to do what you do and you grow phenomenally well from that. Um, yeah, so I don't want you to think that it's all negative. Because we ourselves grow too. So at the very beginning, you know, business to me is like a life cycle. And it starts with an introduction. And this introduction, Kennedy, becomes our stepping stone. So we're the fool, you know, we're the fool jumping into something new, getting our feet wet, have no idea how this thing is going to turn out. We may fall. We may straight, you know, re we may have an issue that prevents us from even going on the path in and of itself. Or we may really, really just grow into it. Okay. So whichever one we are in this life cycle, the introduction is going to be egoic. We think we can do it. I think I can. I think I can. It's stepping into it and trying it, not knowing what it's going to do, how it's going to succeed. And then something happens and, it, and we fail. <laughs> Many of us refuse to get back up and try again. So what takes place is the cycle will either, you know, rear off and we go into another path because we realize that this is not something we want to do, but did we give ourselves enough chance? Did we give ourselves a chance enough to say, yeah, I could keep going. Even though as an entrepreneur, I fell very big time early. I wouldn't say early on. I would say in mid game, because like I said, it's a life cycle. So the introduction is there, but the body of it is when you think you know it all. No one can tell you anything. You have your certification. You've, you've went to school. You got your client base. You even got your building. Your business is booming. So you're not going to be able to tell, you know, that entrepreneur too much. So everything is trial and error. And so you're learning what you're going to accept in your business, what you're not. As an entrepreneur of leadership, helping businesses grow, 
I learned early on to sign a non-disclosure agreement, which makes me accountable for what I can and cannot talk about, say, even in your business, Kennedy. I can't talk about A, B, C, or D. And in doing that, it held me accountable and it also gave me a blueprint of what I would be willing to or be able to speak on behalf of my client, as well as confidentiality clauses that I put in specific to that individual. And then looking at the legal areas, specifically in that career, what is acceptable, what is not acceptable. And these are things that I've done since I was in law, pre-law, you know what I mean? When I was 23, 24, and it's always been a moral basis of how I structure my business and my client base and even those people who I work as third-party affiliates to my client. These are officially that life cycle that we go through. And then we get better. And now that ego becomes self-confidence. And so now we're at that point, Kennedy, we're saying to ourselves, yeah, I do have this. And it's not, uh, I got this, but it is, okay, I have this. And in having it, what is going to take place is you're going to control it. You're going to defy the opportunities that would otherwise overstep you because or sidestep you so that you wouldn't notice it. And people have their ways of putting that life cycle, putting themselves into the life cycle of your entrepreneurship. So you must be very, very mindful of that. And that can include anyone. That can include husbands. Hold on, I I do apologize. Give me one second. That can include husbands, that can include children. That narcissism, it plays a big role in the way people handle and communicate in today's world. And then you finally get to that point where you say, this is awesome. Now I can hire someone to do what it is that I do because I know what I do. I got this thing branded to the ultimate, you know, so that's what I wanted to share with you, Kennedy. I think you're doing a great job. You know, um, I think that you are finding yourself, finding your opportunities. I think that you're growing phenomenally and I don't feel that you should care too much about the areas in which you are not as seasoned in because what's going to happen is if you keep doing something, you're going to get better at it. That's why I tell you stay positive, stay in that mode. When you first wake up, get into your entrepreneur mode, put that hat on and no matter what, recognize you're wearing it. Recognize you're wearing it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's been a blessing talking to you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being a part of the Scales to Success project. And you do know that if you can make it March 23rd, 2024, we're going to have the privatized party for all of my businesses and the ones that can make it will But those who can't, we're going to definitely put your business and everything in the uh, in the roster. Okay. All right. Thank you. God bless. Call me whenever you need me. All right, Kennedy. (laughs) Bye. So entrepreneurs, that is an example of our phone calls, 
Um, Kennedy didn't want to be on the podcast. She didn't want to share too much of her business. So we blocked it out and I just shared what I said to her. So moving into this podcast episode 44, I want to let you know a few things. As entrepreneurs, one thing that we need to recognize in this world of entrepreneurship, of building your brand in today's world, is that we have to stay ahead of the game. We have to stay so focused on our craft until the only thing we're seeing is what is in being what is happening in our field. In our field of study. So I'm not over here in the medical field of study, seeing what the new innovative situations are. Yeah, I may have a, as a doctor of leadership, I noticed that as I grew into my education, a lot of my friends fell off. So I became that mere reflection of those people who could have done this. And sometimes it does not mesh. It doesn't mesh. It doesn't connect. So our friends are going to leave us. We're going to feel alone, you know, but it's not loneliness. It is an upgrade, like upgrading of meeting new people in the field. So like I was saying, if you're in the medical industry, you shouldn't be over in the criminal justice industry unless you're looking for medical legalities that is involved. So you would have a friend in the criminal justice world, or I would have a friend in the medical world just to bounce off a conversation, information, to stay in the know, to stay ahead of the game in case something does take place. Look at the medicinal marijuana. I am a leader a leadership professional. So that means I'm going to have to learn a little bit about the medical side of the industry because it's so new. And in order to stay in the game, when say, if I have a client who wants to start a CDB, uh, CDB, uh, portal or something like that, and they want to get it legalized. Not only am I going to have to go in the medical field, I'm going to have to go into the legal field. I'm going to have to go into the moral and ethical field, the ethics and principles of how to do this for my client in order to make sure that they're staying ahead of the game. Because right now, legislation can change a tort in a day and we not know it. And we think that this is law because it was originally precedent it. And that's not the truth. So small businesses and companies often will have a better chance of promoting creativity and innovation. So companies must determine a way to stay quick with it. Hire those people just fresh out of college. Hire those people who have that creative niche, who has the ability to help you. Because doing that is going to keep us ahead of the game as we grow in our business. Because a lot of times, entrepreneurs, we do have this this practice where when we know better, we do better, but then we stay there. That's not a good practice. Number two, have a plan for change. Expect change to take place in your business. Say, for instance, if you have a passion for helping people to shred papers, (laughs) to keep confidentiality, that is a very big job. That is an extremely big job because when you look at fraudulent activities and and you're a shredding company, you have no idea what your employee will find as a third party information to information that's supposed to be shredded, but yet they take this information and they dox it. They take this information and they fraudulently use identity theft. And then here is an issue for you. These are some of the major ways of looking at the entrepreneur practice and really staying on your game. So know what, know that you have a plan 
the sensible um, f- things to do. Healthy paranoia is going to give you a list of things that you will be doing in your downtime. Not just, you know, oh, I'm off, so I'm going to take a seven-day vacation and do nothing. No, even on that vacation, you want to take that opportunity to share your business with people wherever you are. Call it a business trip, not a vacation. That's what we do, entrepreneurs. Also, be careful with the spending. Pay attention. If you think that your client base is always going to be as fluctuating um, or as consistent as they are, it can fluctuate at any given moment. So please be mindful of spending. <laughs> um, I have this uh, other area of challenging yourself. When you challenge yourself, you look at things that can be avoided. You also ask yourself, okay, if this happens today, if I win the lottery today, will that go in? What amount will I put into my spending that I use on a regular basis for my supplies, for my employee, you know, benefits and, you know, wage payout? I mean, what are we doing? Paranoid leaders always have a healthy paranoia. It's healthy. They don't have all that they require to reach their goals or to succeed, which is a reason why they have to stay on track. This kind of paranoia will make you seek out and strive for things you need to attain in order to easily reach your goals. Try to channel constant growth on levels. Say to yourself, I'm going to do this just to see what happens. As long as it aligns with your mission statement, then it is viable for your business. And just resist failing. See, the healthy paranoia of failure is, I know you have been hearing it time and time again from 100 people, that you must embrace your failures and that you must learn from your fails. Your falls are going to hurt and they're going to be needed. Just like when you're trying to learn how to walk as a child. That failure is the very thing that is going to make you say, I've grown. That's, the, that's where you look at wh- how far you've come. So no one likes to fall, especially when you have an onlooking of people. It's embarrassing. It is something that, you know, you got to get up and dust yourself off. How are you going to stand up? You know, are these people laughing at you? What's really taking place in, during this fall? So you got to accept it though. And you might as well accept it sooner than later. No one in this entire world can tell you anything about Dr. Darina Shine except for Dr. Darina Shine. And that's why I tell you before anyone else tells you, because these people are going to put a twist upon the story in which they see has happened to me. So I would rather tell you all my failures. I would rather tell you all of my uh, feelings of embarrassment, feelings of, you know, and this is what I do when I meet my client base. The very first thing I do is I talk about, you know, how I fail and how it affected my belief in myself and how I challenged myself even in the most darkest realms of state to rise to the occasion every day and do more and appreciate what took place and become healthy at my success paranoia, okay? It will push you to take action to prevent it from happening again. You're dotting all your I's. You're crossing all your T's. You're protecting yourself. You are that person who has been bullied, who has been manipulated, and now you're looking for the culprit. You're you're looking for him. But when you don't see him, it's a good day. And sometimes when people come in to try to manipulate the um, and administer the spinning of this sabotage, you already recognize it. Now, that's that's a sabotaging action right there. Why is that person doing that to me? 
you know, and then now you, you put your defenses up. These are the ways that you protect yourself in business. Microsoft, Bill Gates assumed that the company was always less than two years away from bankruptcy. So that was his fear, his paranoia. But look at Microsoft today. Look at that. These are things that I want you to pay attention to. Prudent um, discernment or, quote, paranoia in business is good for you because it's going to drive you. It's going to keep you on your toes. It's going to make you work harder for your goals. It's going to set you aside from other individuals. And the parano the discerning leader, professional leader, often leads an innovative team and stays on top of their game through the test of time. And that's where you're going to know whether your paranoia is totally unreasonable or if it's successful, because guess what? Time is going to tell you everything. So entrepreneurs, I thank you so much for being here, liking, commenting, and subscribing to this podcast. It wasn't anyone in the chat today because I did a pre-record. I didn't go live on the podcast. I just did a uh, small little rendition of what a phone call would look like how we, how I communicate with other individuals, and just to give you some hope, to give you some support in the business realm, to let you know that, yeah, these things do take place and you got to be ready. You got to be prepared. Just like in the biblical text, when Christians say, be ready, if they're expecting Jesus to arrive, be ready when he comes. You got to have the whole armor on. You got to be always on point. You have to always know that your leader is on his way. And when he shows up, you better be looking beautiful. <laughs> and that's what I want my entrepreneurs to know as well. When your leader is on the way, which you are your leader, when you, the leader, are on your way, you better know and be ready just like a bride on her wedding day. So as always, keep it successful. We love you guys. Thank you so much for taking the time to look at this on YouTube, TikTok, or wherever else the social media platform is going to be airing this podcast. This is episode 44 of Chronicles of a Nonprofit. Today is September the 12th, 2023. You have a blessed and wonderful day. Peace.